Our guest this week, Mr. Jay Nee. Hey, thanks. Hey, hey. If you've been a fan of the Chop House, you know we do a massive wine dinner every year. So I'm sure half of the guests know who you are, but some aren't going to. Jay, give us a little background about you. Eric, thanks. Um, first of all, so excited to be here. Uh, I love showing you wines. I love talking wines with you. Um, I've been uh, in the industry selling wines for about 15 or so years, um, mostly to restaurants. And uh, But I've done hundreds of educational events where uh, people that are just looking to explore the world of wines and, and, and have wines be kind of demystified and, and really just be brought down to uh, to just enjoying wine for what it is, which is one of God's great gifts with the elixir that we get to enjoy every day. So, uh, yeah. And so. that is the big key. Jay really can. Let's go back to our journey and our relationship. We'll start about nine years ago yeah. um, when I when I became partners with Chef Lyman. The wine list here at the Frogtown was about thirteen bottles, fourteen bottles. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. About yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty rough. Yeah, yeah. I was a. You know, I was into operating and I love, you know, guests and yeah. beer and all that. But wine, I did not partake the journey, right. which I'm really super fast forward now. Yeah. I'm extremely involved in. Yeah. So now to a list of about 150, yeah. many of them your magical wines. Yeah. So Jay is a real passionate person that has changed the wine game for me. And I can't be more than excited to show you a little bit about what we do when we taste wine. Yeah. We have a really good time doing it. <laughs> yeah, so. and tasting is so much fun when building a wine list or a liquor program. So Jay and I are going to take you along. He's going to show you some of the stories um, and, and while we're drinking, of course, yeah. <laughs> and how we do this. So Jay brings in a price sheet and he brings in some great products that I've never had and we're going to taste some. Yeah. Tell me about the first. That's mm -hmm. always the goal is to show you something new. Beautiful. Uh, so we're going to start with a white wine. I always, we always go lighter and whiter uh, and work our way through. So what we have here is uh, Malaya. Uh, it is a Spanish uh, Verdejo uh, Sauvignon Blanc mix. So what you're gonna get out of it is, uh, is kind of that bright acidity, really flavorful for summer months. And that's what we're at. And so. I'm seeing on the label, and that's something I really think I want you to chat about. Yeah. Do we have, is this, Vegan? It is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's a certified vegan uh, made with organic. Now we, yeah. we know what that means. A lot of people know what that means when we're talking about food. Yeah. Like vegan. Yeah. 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 Meat, you know, yeah. Um, and anything from an animal. Sure. Tell me what that means in wine. So it's it's interesting because you wouldn't think that there would be any animal products in uh, in something that's made from grapes, right? So, but where we get into using animal products is when we're looking to clarify the wine, uh, get that color right. Uh, and what they do is uh, they do something called fining and what they'll use uh, typically is either one of two products that are animal products. One is either egg whites okay. um, or uh, they'll use something called isinglass, which is essentially the powder of fish bladder. And what that does is it takes particles that are in the liquid and they'll cling to either the egg whites or the icing glass, and then it'll fall to the bottom of the barrel, and what's left is a more clear liquid to then be pumped off and, and bottled. Yeah. If you didn't know, now you know. Yeah. Let's taste. All right. So we are now moving on to my favorite, 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 the reds, baby. Yeah. All right, so it's what all we have going on here. Are you guys oh, still so drinking? 
It's called tasting. Don't you ever do any work? It's this is my work. <sighs> Forget it. What do you got on the table here? Oh, we got some great wine. Yeah, wines. no, I'll use, I can use this. All right, let, let me get to work. All right, all right. Okay. You go do your thing. Tasting here, yeah. you know, so I apologize about Chef. Sorry, I mean, it just doesn't get it. it just doesn't I know, get it. It's out of control. Yeah. Moving into red wines, yeah. my favorite. Before we do taste, yeah. explain a little bit about the Corbin. Sure. Uh, so the Corbin is really just used uh, as a way to preserve the wine. We can extract wine out of the bottle without opening it up fully. Uh, and what that allows me to do is to take a bottle and go to more than one restaurant because not everybody's schedule matches up. Not everybody has a concept that matches up with wines of this quality. So, you know, to get that schedule together in order to be able to show it at its best. And it's huge for us, you know, in, in the restaurant industry because we have what's called a Corbin section now. Yep. And this is where I really get to take some of your great wines, Jay, at a price point and be able to pour them and you can have an experience, two ounce experience, a four ounce experience, yep. and not have to open a $90 bottle of wine. Right, absolutely. And go, well, I really don't like this, yep. and then try to go to, you know, I don't, you can't, you know, you can return a bottle if it's bad. Right. You can't return a bottle if you right. like, I just don't I really just don't like, like it. Yeah. I just don't really, yeah. Yeah. I don't really want it. Tell us a little about the backstory of the Herman story and the sure. later rumor. Yeah, sure. Herman, Herman story, uh, the name of the winery, um, the winemaker, his name is Russell Fromm. He actually named it after his grandfather, who was like his hero growing up. Uh, this is called Late Bloomer, this release here. This is a Grenache. Uh, he is uh, Central Coast based, uh, pretty much near Paso Robles. Uh, and the label, as you can see, uh, really crazy. That's it's awesome. uh, it's actually... That's it's Lyman's a, high school picture? I think it might be Lyman's <laughs> high school picture. It's amazing. Uh, but this is actually a, a, a real fan of the winery's uh, school ID. Uh, so they so they submit pictures. Yeah, 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 awesome. and and then people vote on it. So um, the good part about uh, one of the things that's really fun about this winery is uh, really about ninety percent of what he uh, makes is sold directly through mailing list and through tasting room. So we get just such a limited amount of this wine. Uh, so it's pretty exclusive and uh, you know, you're not going to be able to find it uh, everywhere, but uh, once people taste it, they're clamoring for that it. Is, so. It's a total yeah. home run. And that's yeah. where the Corbin again really does come in and I can bring in wines, build my list, get a little bit avant-garde, bring yep. in some of the names. I mean, we, you know, we know, we know the Opuses, sure. we know the Camuses and they're yeah. great wines. I'm not going to you know, talk about yeah. their beautiful, absolutely gorgeous wines, yeah. but boy, when you go through tasting, you can really get some experiences and the story of the winemakers yeah. themselves and what they do yeah. that um, are told them. So, yeah, and, and it really is these small producers that have such great stories that are never heard because they are so small. And, right, and, and if they're direct yeah. kind of the mailing list, that yeah. means somebody obviously kind yep. of knows them or they went to, they right. went there. And, uh, For sure. All right, let's yeah. taste. All right, cheers. Salute. to a Cabernet. So this is called Everything is Under Control. And uh, the imagery, I believe, is like, um, you know, like computer language, um, just kind of done in a visual uh, standpoint because everything is technology driven. Okay. Um, this is uh, by St. K Winery. Uh, again, similar area, um, uh, Central Paso Creek, very, very small production. Uh, again, probably 90% of what he sells is direct to consumer uh, through his mailing list. People follow him. This is his first release as a Cabernet. Um, he normally does blends and he normally does uh, kind of big Rhone, Rhone varietals. And, oh man, this is, when I saw this and tasted it the first time, it was, I absolutely big boy. thought, big yeah, boy. I thought Frogtown Chapos. You know? I love it. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. Tell me th what that 
for, for the, the tannic move there, and that's stripping my tongue. Walk me through what that is. So tannins are present in really all organic material, and if you've never experienced it, um, the simplest way of doing it is uh, picture taking a, a tea bag and putting that on your tongue. Um, it really just kind of, it gives you that, you know, it's that mouth drying right. while still having some pucker. Um, and you know, when you see it, uh, it's more present in thicker skin grapes. So the Cabernet being a big thick skin grape, uh, it's the one that we most often think about. And where it pairs, pairs so well with the steakhouse is, uh, you know, think of the ribeye. Think of, you know, that, that fat that's broken down with heat uh, and the, the fat itself coats your tongue. And so a sip of a tannic wine will kind of strip that away to prepare your palate to take the next uh, bite of food. Have that experience again. Yeah, yeah. Experience over experience. and over again. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. Now I'd like to touch on yeah. uh, an important thing here before we, before we kind of finish up. Um, you have helped me a ton in way more than just wine. Um, and that is because you are also, um, what do you call it? Why am I totally blanking on it? Consultant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. So yeah. Jay, I'd like you to tell our listeners and uh, people, restaurant owners that listen and watch this. Sure. If there is something they're having trouble with, they could be anything, any yeah. piece of the industry. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that side of your life. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, first and foremost, I consider myself a consultant more than a salesperson, and I've always taken it uh, based on relationship. Um, where my strength lies is kind of the beverage hospitality side, uh, you know, kind of all the segments of beverage hospitality, and, and that's what I try and help out with with restaurants, with PA producers, with, you know, distillers and brewers, you know, trying to do tasting room and having kind of a, uh, what their what their look is, what their identity is, etc. Uh, so I try and guide people through to get balance in their beverage uh, program. Uh, a lot of times you go to a um, a bar and they're just known for their mixology, which is great. That's right, awesome. Right, right. But they're not putting the same level of uh, of effort into beer or wine in some in some cases. And you know what we know about the consumer is like myself. There's a lot of people that are equal opportunists. They'll have a cocktail before wine and then they'll go to beer or wine and, you know, for dinner. Uh, and then, you know, they will move throughout. They'll have three different things. You know, they may start with a beer or, and have wine for dinner and, and end with a cocktail. Um, you know, and that can happen and be different every single time depending on concept or whatever. So to be so focused on one or two out of the three, uh, you're leaving an opportunity on the table uh, that you know you hopefully we can kind of guide you to take uh, a little bit of time and, and everybody benefits really. So what's the best way to contact you? So best way to contact me, uh, you can reach me at uh, j at juniperandgrain.com, okay. all one word, uh, or my phone number is 484-635-6501. Uh, uh, it works for restaurants, it works for, you know, businesses that are in the, uh, in the beverage industry, but it also, uh, I do, I work with nonprofits that are doing virtual uh, fundraisers uh, and have uh, had some great success doing that. And I also, you know, will work for with people that are trying to build up a, a, you know, kind of a wine cellar and need some guidance or just connect people. Uh, that's what I try and do is just be a, a network resource too. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Kitchen whipping something out for you. Tasty. 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 We're tasty. Alright. Well, okay. While we're at it, I'll put you guys over the top here with a little shot. What do you think? Sure. A little rum to go with the fish? Sure. So, Sounds good. All right. What'd you make? That is a rum peppercorn cream sauce on top of our bear Monday. Oh man. Cheers, Cheers boys. Cheers.